Are we going fishing? I like that. Let's go. So we found ourselves at a very familiar location and that is the gas station. I'm definitely at a gas station a lot more than I would uh, like to be filling up my truck traveling across the country. But we have to fill up the boat here for the first time uh, ever taken out in the water. I'm out with my dad today. We're gonna take it out and do a little bit of the break-in process. So if you guys are new to the channel or you missed the last video I put out, I put out an overview of my 2020 Skeeter FXR21. And so uh, that video will be linked up here in this corner. So we're gonna unscrew the, uh, the warning label on the gas and we're gonna put some fuel in this thing for the first time. Alrighty, let's see. So gas is filling up. It is time that we have some lunch. Got myself some canes. Boys and girls, the maiden voyage of my brand new boat. I love making videos like this every single year just because one, it allows me to share with you guys a cool experience, and two, it just lets me reminisce on like how blessed I am to be able to do what I do and be able to operate a piece of machinery like this. It is truly incredible. I'm gonna trim ourselves up here. A new sounding trim sounds good too. Ooh, straight up juiciness. And the water's looking a little green today. Not looking very clear. All right, stop. What we're gonna do now is grab the tripod and make sure that uh, the bulb is pumped and everything because usually with a brand new engine, you have to get all the gas you just put in kind of pumped into the engine system. So just like last year, it took a few minutes to get the engine started. It'll probably take a few minutes today as well. And that's how engines do. I'm just pumping and pumping. There we go. That's the noise I like to hear. Good. Oh yeah. Oh yes. Yes ma'am and yes sir. So we have made it out here. We are breaking in the engine now. And as you guys remember from my last year's video, it is about a, I mean, you couldn't really do it in one day. It's a seven to 10 hour break in period. So if you wanted to drive seven hours in one day, you could. But we're gonna do it in a, a two to three, three day period. I'm not really in any rush to break it in because I can fish while I break it in. Um, but you do wanna do a few hours at a time. So today we're gonna get one to two hours in the engine. And so the first part of the break in that we're gonna be doing is basically idling like this for 15 minutes. So 15 minutes is 0.25 of an hour uh, on the engine. So I do not have graphs on my boat. You guys can probably see that right now. Uh, I'm waiting for the graphs to come in and for my custom graph mounts from Boat Logics to come in. And so I'm using what Skeeter has here on the dash, which is uh, a little screen that has not only your RPMs on it, but has engine hours, it has your clock, uh, RPM, PSI, you know, water pressure in the engine, uh, engine temperature, battery voltage on your batteries, uh, your fuel level, your trim position. It's got all the different uh, you know, things you may need on this dash in case your electronics were to go out one day or you want to have something else on your electronics and all of your data, engine data down here. So we're going to be switching back and forth today between uh, boat hours and RPM so that we get the, uh, the proper break in. So we're going to idle for a few more minutes then the rest of that first hour is going to be nothing over 3000 RPMs, which is like, you're barely on plane. <laughs> you're, you're kind of riding that, that ridge between plowing and, and being on plane. So we're just going to sit here for a few minutes maybe take some questions from Instagram and answer them, but uh, I'm excited. I just get to be out here, beautiful Lake Travis, with my dad, Yo! and we're just having a good time. Well, as we are finishing out this idle portion of the break-in, we got to this cove over here, and we can see, we didn't know what it was. I thought it was a power line with a bird on it or something, but somebody has set up a slack line to go across, how high is that, 20 feet, 25 feet? 25 feet, 25 feet over the water, they're slack lining. So we're gonna go uh, get some video of that for you guys. You never know what you're gonna see out here. Uh, this past weekend I was in El Patro Chico, walking uh, in between the mountains over there. That's nuts. So this dude was in Utah last week, suspended over canyons. That's crazy. All right, get up for us here. <laughs> we'll see if I can do it. Ah! 
Oh. Yeah, no. <laughs> that was sick. Thanks for letting us come over. Thanks, Good day. Well, he invited us to go slacklining, but uh, I don't know if I'm quite up for that today. Any other day, I really would. We, got to break in. We, got, we have a Yamaha 250 SHO to break in. And that's just as cool as hanging over a cliff. So we've gotten close to finishing the first hour of, uh, of our braking process, and I saw this point here I've never seen before up here on the Colorado arm, and it looks juicy. So good thing I brought a few rods. I brought a jerkbait rod and Alabama rig rod. So I think I'm going to chuck around the jerkbait. We're going to strap the chest mount on and of course, give you guys a little bit of fish in action. I would be, uh, it, it would not be nice of me if I brought you guys out for a video about a bass boat and didn't actually show you guys catching fish in it. So we've got to, We've got to catch my first bass in the brand new FXR. And while I do that, my dad is going to calibrate the uh, Minn Kota switch here. Right, Dad? Yeah. Yeah, how nice yeah, of him. Yeah, yeah. How nice of him. First cast in the new boat. That was not a great cast. That's kind of the point though of a first cast. You don't want it to be all that great. Oh man, what the poopy is up with my brakes. I have no electronics, so I have no clue what the water temperature is. I don't know how deep I am. I can just assume based on the, the slope of this bank that I can't be in more than 10 feet, 11 feet. You guys oh. catching anything? We're just, I mean, I'm not fishing much. We're just doing boat calibrations. It's a, it's a new boat. <laughs> so I'm just fishing while he... Uh, You're serious guys then. We are, yes. He's fishing while I do all the work. You guys had a haul and then hit a spot and haul Yes, haul. exactly. That's, you got it. That's the goal right there. That guy gets it right there. He understands. So water clarity, I think is a little bit too dirty for Mr. Jerky Jerk. So we're gonna get out the Alabama rig. <clears throat> How's the work going, Father? Hardly working? Oh, it's just doing fantastic. That's good. You can't expect me on my first day out in the new boat to not catch one. And I will catch one. Oh, it's shallow up there, holy smokes. Okay, so on the power poles with, with the switch you have, the dash switch, they go up and down at the same speed. And they go... All the way. Is that all the way? Yep. Press again, down. Okay, that's all the way. Now let's try the foot pedals. Press the foot pedals. Foot pedals, <laughs> the port is slower. Interesting. We gotta do some calibrations, it seems after I make a cast. Oh, hey, I got one. I got a fish. Oh, and it's not a bad one. Let's go. Actually, yeah, it is kind of a bad one. But hey, Woo. first fish on the FXR. Not a giant, but it is a fish. On the Alabama rig, the old flashy swimmers. Yeah, I need a picture. A picture, hold, please. Hold up the Alabama rig so I can show. Am I in your shadow? They're at, Bass Pro, they're at Bass Pro Shops right now. Who is? The guy. All right. Lake Travis A rig strikes again. Let's see if we can't get one two cast in a row. Okie dokie. Back to the break in process. Roger, Roger. Time to go 26 knots across the ground. <laughs> We did all the trolling motor power pole calibrations and now we are uh, back to breaking in the engine. Right now we are at how many hours on the engine? I can't find the setting. 0.8. So we got another 0.2 hours, which is what, 10 minutes? Yeah, yeah, 0.2 is a fifth. So about 10, 10 12 minutes left uh, in this hour. Although for, we're gonna idle for three or four minutes. I'm gonna answer some questions I had on Instagram. Uh, I told people very important questions only, so we'll see what people uh, what people ask today. I do a poll every single week, usually on Mondays or Saturdays, on my Instagram for you guys to ask questions and such. And I always answer them on Instagram, but today I'm going to answer them here on YouTube. So, uh, let's see. Why now? I'm not going to answer that question. Never mind. Favorite lake of all time? It's uh, it's my Lake X lake that I can't go to anymore because I don't have access to it. That's that is my favorite lake of all time. Second favorite, yeah. Second favorite though. Ugh. I know where it is, I know where it is. Lake Austin? No. What? Lake of the Woods? No. Uncle Dan's Lake? No. 
Not this lake. Sure as heck not this lake. Oh, oh. Well, okay, okay. Favorite body of water is the St. Lawrence River in New York, but favorite lake, I don't categorize that as a lake. Really? I guess it connects to Lake Ontario, so you can uh, kind of call it a lake. Uh, am I gonna do any hunting? I probably won't do much hunting this winter. I kind of already missed deer season. The only reason I hunt is to get food, and uh, I've not been dying for food lately, so probably not gonna do uh, much hunting. How much different is the old trek from the four treks? Tons different. I mean, you gotta feel it with your foot. It is it is an electronic assist on the pedal. It's so much easier. Four treks doesn't have spot lock. This two has spot lock. Two words. Spot lock. Yeah, yeah. Spot lock is really the biggest thing. Let's see, one more good question that we got. What types of baits to throw based on the wind and the sky? That's a really broad question. I mean, wind, it's gonna chop the water up and so you're gonna have usually dirtier water because it throws the dirt and, and grass around. So you're gonna have to throw more baits. Yeah, more baits that are uh, reaction type things, maybe a little bit more brighter colors. And then based on the wind and the sky, well, dark sky yeah, if the sky is dark, you're gonna wanna throw colors that are uh, a little more flashy. If it's if it's bright outside, you want to throw really, really natural. So by natural, I mean watermelons, whites, clears. Uh, and if it's a dark sky, you're going to want to throw some some golds, uh, some some black and blues, chartreuse, all that jazz. Why 10 foot power poles? You can see there instead of eight foot power poles. The reason why I went tens is because. I had several people in the boat buying process that really, really wanted 10 foot power poles. And so just in the process of selling the boat next year, this boat here, if you guys are curious, will be for sale in November. I know it's weird on a boat breaking video to talk about selling the boat, but that's just how it works. Uh, I get a new boat and sell it every year. So if you guys are curious, this thing will be for sale and it will be the most well taken care of, nicest bass boat on the market for the price. So if you guys are interested, it'll be next November. But the reason why I got that is because people wanted 10 footers and also I wanted to give them a try. I heard 10 footers in the past have had some issues with the hydraulics, but lately I've heard they've completely uh, secured those issues and they're not an issue anymore. And I just wanted to get two foot deeper. You know, I've I found some scenarios with bed fish on kind of a slant where one of my power poles would, would touch the ground, the other one would not, especially here on Lake Travis. I just didn't want to have any situations where I needed a longer power pole, so I got the longest ones they made. So that's all the questions that we got for today. We're gonna keep breaking in the rest of the boat and we'll see you guys back at the ramp. I can never get in this boat with the FXR without doing a little bit of a donut test. Now, if you guys have seen my video, I got like 40,000 views this summer of me test driving this exact model boat uh, at the, uh, the Skeeter photo shoot. The donuts this thing can do, the, the lines they've, they've put in this boat, I think it's two degrees more, I don't know the terminology. It, it digs deeper into the water and so it allows it to make much, much tighter turns. So we're gonna hand the camera to my dad and uh, we're gonna do a donut for y'all. Hopefully my dad doesn't fly out of the boat. General impressions of the FXR. It uh, feels smoother. It feels more solid. There's no rattling. There's nothing. Just boom, 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 right across the waves. Really smooth. Really nice. You heard it here first from Dad. Oh, so easy. So be breezy. So beautiful. Cover girl. But Lake Travis really is a cool lake. I'm lucky to be able to have grown up on a lake like this, a highland chain that has deep, clear water rocks and big bass. It's, just, it's a cool uh, opportunity. A lot of different ways of how to catch fish. And not only bass, but you know, stripers and white bass and crappie, just a, a really, really cool lake. And it's beautiful. I love Central Texas. I'm definitely gonna miss, not, not, not that I'm moving away, I'm moving to Waco, which is actually kind of more central than Austin is, but gonna miss the hill country. It is beautiful out here. All the way up. Okay, good. Wow, that was easy. The one thing I can say about Skeeter boats forever is that they go on the trailer so easy. Like it is, if you have the person backing down knows exactly how high the water level should be on the trailer and you have the right speed and direction, it's amazing. Well, folks at home, what a day. Beautiful Lake Travis, beautiful end of the day. 
and I'm just glad you guys were able to hop along with me. So if you guys are not a subscriber to Team TRF, I want you guys to join the team to be able to uh, follow me along on all my adventures. Make sure you guys have the post notifications for YouTube turned on because YouTube does not do a great job of putting my videos in your homepage. And so if you guys want to see all the adventures in this boat, in the old boat, and uh, everything to come, all the kayak stuff I do, all the tournament stuff, and of course all the tip videos, I try to do my channel. I try to make my channel as instructional as possible, and so uh, I would love for you guys to be along the journey with me. So, with that said, we'll see you guys on the next exciting episode of TRF, which I guarantee you is going to have some fish. <laughs>